All right, I'm here with Joe Speed. Joe is the field CTO for AD Link. And uh, Joe, can you tell us about your role at AD Link and your passion for all things ROS related? Sure, happy to. So I work on all the things autonomous and robotics and open source. So working very much with, uh, with our robotics customers, you'll see some of them here, mm -hmm. working with the open source community around the, uh, the robotics software. So um, the robotics, the autonomous driving, and the uh, middlewares that help support that. Right. So um, why do you think this race is so important to the evolution of autonomous vehicles and robotics? I, I think it's an amazing one. You know, in autonomy, you are very, you don't have a lot of freedom to try new things that might have risk. So, you know, you always have to think about that. And here what we have is this incredible laboratory, this two and a half mile racetrack, mm -hmm. where we can go out, we can try all the new technologies, the algorithms with no risk of injury to people. Right. And I understand a couple of cars this week pushed it to the limit. <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't lose any cars, um, but we did find uh, uh, for, for these cold temperatures yeah. and the tires, um, we did find the, the limits of the vehicle's um, uh, performance. So we did have uh, two, two vehicles that both spun out at, I think, 137 on the turn number two. Wow. So do you think Ross has a future uh, for commercial uh, autonomous vehicles? I know it does. The, um, so our friends at Apex AI, they took the open source, uh, open robotics Ross and forked it and worked to create a safety certified uh, commercial mm. distribution. And their customers are Toyota Research and mm. most of the Germans. So it, it's already happening, whether companies admit it or not, they're already putting it in the vehicles. And really today, these days, every new robot you see launched, it's running Ross. Right. So this is really an incredible piece of technology we have behind us here. So uh, what do you think has been the most difficult challenge in integrating all this stuff together? I know you've been in the middle of all of that. Yeah. And can you take us through a little bit looking at all this stuff here? Tell sure. us a little bit about what we see in terms of the sensing technologies and the compute technology. Yeah, so there's been a, a ton of challenges. So we're starting with a what was uh, originally a Delara Indy Light 15 race car, mm -hmm. um, then as we work together on the program with Clemson Engineering, Juncos Racing, Autonomous Stuff, and the others, um, Delara actually came out with a new version. It's the AV21, so it's the Autonomous Vehicle 21. So it's a very specialized version of Indy Lights. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, so they make the monocoques in Parma, Italy, fly them over. Juncos and the Delara factory down the street put the race car together. Autonomous Stuff in integrates all of the autonomy bits, mm -hmm. okay? So you've got a lot of technology from a lot of companies. So in terms of the challenges involved, there are just so many, right? So um, most, you know, the autonomy equipment and the software and the open source were not designed for 200 mile an hour race cars, right? right? right. They were not designed for these kinds of vibrations and situations. So there's been a lot of learning, a lot of work that we've all put in together to solve these things. So, you know, each of these cars, if, if, you know, so the Indy Motor Speedway is our laboratory, but each vehicle is itself a laboratory. And we're always learning and improving new things and contributing a, um, a much of that back upstream to the open source that goes into the iRobot Roombas, the, you know, all the different uh, robots that you see. Right. So tell us a little bit about, I mean, what type of sensors are, are on sure, these vehicles? Sure, sure, happy to give you a walkthrough here. So, uh, so just to break it down, um, uh, what we've got here is when people ask me what sensors are on the vehicle, I laugh a little because the answer is all the sensors. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, uh, uh, so just starting out here, here's what we got. Three Luminar flash LIDARs, mm -hmm. okay? So these are 123, so the three of them together gives you 360 degree coverage. Yep. We have six Allied Mako cameras, Allied Vision Mako cameras. Um, two of them, okay, with the more telephoto lens are forward facing. So these are stereo vision, which is very oh. important for some of the teams. So some of the teams rely on cameras more than others. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other four, that gives you full 360 degree uh, imagery. All right. 
You've got um, a hexagon Novotel GNSS, and we actually have two of them. So we have two GNSS, G, like GPS with inertial measurement unit, uh, and four antennas. And we do something clever here, which is we put um, one GNSS with two antennas four aft, and then the other with antennas left, right, and with this, we get incredibly precise uh, measurement, not just of the vehicle's location, but actually like how it's positioned. Okay. So if it starts to drift in the corners, the GNSS detects it, wow. okay? It can tell you that. The, uh, we've got the active radars. So we've got uh, radars um, forward and uh, left and right. So we're running a wide angle um, radar left, right, and a long distance radar huh. forward. And then these, these sensors connect into, we have a Cisco rugged industrial switch, okay? okay. And then that front ends the 80 link computer. So okay. this is a, um, when, when Gene O'Connell uh, came to me and asked us to get involved to help make the program successful, you know, I looked at the requirements, right? So, you know, most robots, on a good day, and a robot's in a warehouse factory, they're doing like one and a half, two meters per second, right. okay? This thing, top speed, you know, you're talking like 83, 87 meters per second. Yeah. And uh, so to process all the imagery, the, the, to do the sensor fusion, um, to work with all this, we need very high performance. So 80 Link, um, custom designed and manufactured, and AVA, uh, that's our line of autonomous driving computers. So an mm -hmm. AVA computer um, with a very, top spec, you know, $5,500 NVIDIA GPU with 48 gig of RAM, wow. um, and with all the CAN adapters, all the things that are required here. So we made that for the program, so that connects, all these sensors are coming into the ADLink computer, and then the computer is then connected via CAN to a New Eagle Raptor safety MCU, mm -hmm. which front ends the Schaefer Paravan drive-by wire system. That's where you get you got your steering angle, your throttle, your brake, all of those things are done yeah. via the shape for paravan. Wow. Uh, and, then, um, and then all of this is connected to chase vehicles during practice and to track side during in race control during the actual race uh, via the Cisco curb radio. So that used to be fluid mesh. So that's a high bandwidth radio that mm -hmm. all the teams use. So it's really fun in the practice days, you'll see a, one of these on the track with a chase vehicle behind it. And in the passenger seat of the chase vehicle is a student with a laptop and an Xbox controller, like remotely driving the car with using an Xbox game controller. <laughs> so I, that, that, that makes me laugh a little. Yeah. Uh, so that's it in terms of the hardware. And then where I really knew they would have a challenge, you know, I think a lot of people maybe thought like, we'll just build cars, give them the students, and they're smart, they'll figure it out. <laughs> And I knew that they needed more than that. So, um, so myself, Josh Whitley, Kat Scott of um, Open Robotics, Andreas at Eclipse Foundation with the Open Autonomous Driving Work Group, um, we all work together and then many contributors, so many companies, uh, Robotech AI, Apex AI, Tier 4, just I, Bosch, I, would be, I can't even name them all for you right now. Uh, so we all work together to provide the base vehicle software. Right, okay? the software so, stack. Yep, so Alex from the TOOM team, he leads that with Josh Whitley, myself, others, and what we do is we work with the universities on what their problems and needs are from a software perspective mm -hmm. and software integration for all this hardware. And we develop uh, the open source stack. So the open source stack that is the IAC based vehicle software, mm -hmm. uh, produced by the IAC based vehicle software work group, <laughs> is Open Robotics ROS2. Okay? Yep. So we started with Foxy, but teams like Toom have moved to Galactic, which oh. is the latest release. Um, the, so ROS2 Fat Foxy, with the AutoWare, uh, AutoWare providing, they develop the drive by wire interface, so mm -hmm. the AutoWare package that abstracts the interface to the drive by wire. Um, a lot of packages around uh, localization using LiDAR and some other things. And then the middleware. So Eclipse Foundation provided the middleware. So you've mm -hmm. got the Eclipse Cyclone DDS with the, uh, now with Isorox built in. So that's a brilliant thing that Bosch invented and now Apex develops. Uh, it's zero copy. So uh, you can take large camera images and, and LiDAR point clouds and copying large objects in a computer memory is very expensive yeah, operation. Right. Uh, so what it does is it, it, when ingests the LiDAR data or the camera image, there's a copy. And what it does is it basically publishes a handle to it 
So then all the other applications can just get it without making copies. So it, mm. it radically improves the latency, the jitter, um, uh, especially CPU use. So basically whether it's a 16 byte message or an eight megabyte point cloud, the CPU cost is the same. Yeah. Yeah. So for like, I, I know this is a little nerdy, but for roboticists, this is like my yeah, mana. Right. That's right? why I was excited to hear. So, uh, and then um, and then all of that communicating using the Eclipse Zeno project over the Cisco radios. So that's how all wow. the communication. So Zeno is another Eclipse open source project and everything I'm talking about, completely open source, right? Yep. So you want to go build your own car and race it? All the open source is there. This has really pushed the envelope on all yeah, of this. Literally. Yeah, it really has. It really has. So the Zeno lets them um, seamlessly extend this ROS2 over the Cisco wireless right. to the chase vehicles, to trackside. And they can even run a ROS2 instance on a laptop in the chase car and use like RVIS and all the normal ROS tools. Mm -hmm. And it seamlessly bridges ROS instances that are on other sides of a wireless radios or even other sides of the country. So hmm. we have people doing teleop uh, with that of robots in other countries. So this, I, what I love about this is how it's really extended ROS in so many mm -hmm. directions, pushed the limit, and now um, what I'm hopeful of, and give me your view here as we sort of close this conversation about what this is gonna do for commercial autonomous vehicles, getting us to level four, level five, at some point in the yeah, future. Yeah, I, I think it does It does a great thing. Um, you know, Apex AI and AD Link, uh, we are some of the contributors along with others to the Eclipse Foundation and mm -hmm. the middlewares. Um, we're committed to make it functionally safe yep. um, and ISO certifiable. And uh, and we've gotten a lot of improvement in the, the entire stack, yep. like all the foundations, all the projects um, because of this program. And you've got people like Toom that have committed that after IEC, all of their innovation contributions that they've made, yeah. they're gonna contribute back to the open source community. That's what okay. it's all about. It, yeah, it's, so it's gonna do great things and, uh, and, it's, and it's not just vehicles. So w one of the things that's so brilliant about the Ross community is when iRobot makes an improvement for the iRobot Roomba vacuum cleaner, mm -hmm. that immediately helps the autonomous forklifts and the vehicles right. and the robo dogs and the other things, right? When when we make these kinds of improvements to Ross and the middleware for the IEC racing program, it immediately has implications for things like even think like surgical robots, right. okay? Like like low latency, low jitter behaviors mm -hmm. are good for all the things. You know, if you're doing manufacturing, CNCs, mobile robots, it helps all the things. Yeah. So so think about like this work means less manufacturing defects, right? It means saving more lives. Right. Well, Joe, I want to thank you for your time. We're so excited. I uh, appreciate the invitation to come be here today and uh, looking forward to the event tomorrow. Hey, always a pleasure, Thanks. Mike. Thank Thanks. you so much. Yeah.